Good evening and welcome to the 2022 DeKalb County Women Veterans Celebration. Presenting the colors for tonight, please welcome the Junior ROTC Color Guard from Shambly High School to be followed by the singing performance of the Veteran Anthem written by Takasha Swan.
please welcome Dr. Donna K. Coleman, Chaplain of Mental Health Services for the Atlanta VA Healthcare System, who will provide tonight's invocation. Good evening, everybody. I just want to say, you sang that. <laughs> Can we give her an extra round of applause? To Kosha Swan, let me say this to you ladies before we get started. I am a Navy veteran and I am so honored to be here. Commissioner, I am so grateful, Dr. Cooper, and I won't start naming names because I will miss somebody and I don't want to say anything amiss. When I say that we are women veterans, it reminds me of that song, I'm age myself, sisters are doing it for themselves. See, I can't sing, but I can talk. <laughs> When we begin to know, she said, I am still me. But when you get to know who me is, I know who I am because I know whose I am. When you know whose you are, you begin to see things differently. When you put your glasses on, when you put your right mind and the gospel according to the parliament and the funkadelic says, when you free your mind, Y'all know how that go. Y'all wasn't always your left, right, left. You was to the left, to the right. Y'all was doing it like that. Listen, when I tell you, when you free your mind, your behind will begin to follow. I talk about adverse childhood experiences as a trauma therapist, as a former prosecuting attorney, as a former defense attorney, as a former litigator, I'm still an attorney, I still take cases. However, I'm a mental health chaplain now. Our history does not define who we are. If you're talking about looking to the past, do it like Sankofa says and look to the past so you won't forget where you came from because if you forget where you came from, you won't see trouble when it rears its head again. And the troubles that we see in the present will always be things that have been from the past because the enemy of your soul has nothing new to offer. You just need to know they tricks. If you was in the army, raise your hands. If you were in the Navy, raise your hands. If you were in the Coast Guard, raise your hands. We don't have no Coast Guard. How about the Air Force? If you were in the Marines, raise your hands. If you was in the Army of the Lord, raise your hands. Let us say this. Don't ever let somebody tell you who you are. Don't be defined by somebody because I'm still me. I was me because I was born free. When you are born free, and I ain't talking about them lines in the 70s, I'm talking about born free in your spirit. You shall know how to make real connections. Not because you're trying to hook up and level up like Sierra say. you trying to level up because God said, I have a plan for you. If y'all waiting for me to start saying the ministry of the food, I am saying it now. <laughs> know who you are. Don't forget where you came from, from a Sankofa perspective, but don't let adverse childhood experiences, don't let MST, TBI, don't let any kind of drama or trauma define who you are. Let me tell you, millions didn't make it, but all of us were ones of the ones who got through. Whether you were a combat veteran, whether you were a veteran that was an administrator, whether you was do -do 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 doing taps, I don't know what you were doing, but you were doing something of value. Whatever is on your mind that's blocking you from being your absolute best, take it out, 
cast it down, cast down imaginations. And anything that tell you, you ain't a bad mama jamma. Let me tell you something, when you begin to understand your purpose, you ain't gonna be looking at that sister. That sister came over there and sat at that table. I didn't know her, she my new BFF. And then I got another one I can't tell y'all about too. She came over there and we had a spirited conversation. We were not in competition. When you're not in competition with somebody else, the divine can begin to use you as fallow ground to be able to plant seeds so that they gonna know you by your stripes. They gonna know you by the fruit. Yes, y'all go back there and get ready to eat that fruit and eat that food. Know this. We have a divine purpose. And if we can get out of our way to stop the madness, I don't like you because you got on shoes. My feet hurt. That's why I got on them flat shoes. I ain't trying to wear no $1,500 red bottoms and I be tiptoeing around. I'm just trying to tell you. Don't judge them by what's on their behind. Judge them by what's on their mind and what they walking out in their lives. On that note, any special prayer request, I'm going to just go across the room and we're going to say, let's bow our heads so that we can move forward with this evening's program. Gracious God, we just thank you today for this inaugural event that has been planted in the mind and spirit of those who prepared this gathering. Gracious God, help this be the beginning of good and wonderful things that are to come. Help those that are here know that they have value. Everybody will not be on the front seat. Everybody will not be at the top. Everybody will not be at the bottom. But in God's economy, the people that God has chosen, he gives them the ability to have good success. He gives us wisdom. He gives us kindness. He gives us purpose so that when we tap into ourselves, the real selves he created us to be, we be bad to the bone. Gracious God, anybody that has illness in their body, anybody has illness in their mind, let them understand that they can cast their cares on you. For you are a mighty God that is a healer. Bless this food so that we may eat it and receive it and do those things that you are calling us to do in this season and beyond. May we give honor to those that are being honored tonight, those who put this program on, and to the visionaries who had sight so that they could see. We say these and all things in the master's name of the universe we pray and we say together, amen, amen, and amen. Please be seated and welcome Dr. Anthony G. Cooper, Chief of the Atlanta VA Healthcare System Center for Development and Civic Engagement. Good evening. What am I supposed to do after that? <laughs> now unto him who's able to keep you. <laughs> Ushers come forward, take the collections from the left to the right. I don't know. I mean, what, what's next? <laughs> that was amazing. And you work where at again? The Atlanta VA. I just want to put that out there. So let me handle the business that I'm here for. That was amazing. You know, I was hungry when I got here. Now I'm so full. Just amazing. Good evening, and I'm honored to recognize tonight's distinguished guests. As I call your name, would you please stand to be recognized? Michael L. Thurman, CEO of DeKalb County, Georgia. Lorraine Cochran Johnson, Commissioner, Super District 7 of DeKalb County, Georgia. Mm -hmm. 
Angela Moore, State Representative, Georgia House Representative, District 90. She made it. Thank you for pressing through, ma'am, that traffic, and we appreciate you. Viola Davis, State Representative, Georgia House of Representatives, District 87. <laughs> she here yet? She was very instrumental in helping us, and so they had a session that went over, so we want to make sure we would definitely recognize her if she comes in a little later. Dr. Donna K. K. Coleman, Chaplain, Mental Health Services of the Atlanta VA Healthcare System. <laughs> We thank each of you for your presence here this evening and for your support for our veterans and the contributions that you have made in service of our great country. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our DeKalb County CEO, Michael L. Thurman. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, let's give the chief a round of applause. Dr. Cooper, thank you so much. We appreciate you so much. Uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, uh, my friend, my colleague, uh, a woman who never fails to speak truth to power. Doesn't matter whether the power sits in the CEO's office or the governor's office, who but for her, we would probably not be here today, uh, Commissioner Lorraine Cochran Johnson. Give her a round of applause. I appreciate her so much. She has brought so much energy and vision and uh, inspiration to DeKalb County. And of all the things that we do, uh, I can tell you this, being CEO is OK. Uh, but if you don't have at least four votes on the county commission, you ain't nothing. And uh, Commissioner Cochran Johnson has been one of those people I turned to, so thank you so much. Uh, Representative uh, Angela, stand up. She's Miss Moore, Representative Moore, a community leader, a community leader who used to just give politicians hell, but now she is one of them. So give her a round of applause. Now she's one of them. I don't know what that means, but, uh, but most of all, on behalf of our 800,000 citizens here in DeKalb County, Georgia, and really all Americans and all people all across the face of this planet who appreciate and love freedom and justice, who recognize that uh, without that, freedom is not free, I celebrate the women in this room, the women who answered the call to serve, who the women uh, who went to the front lines, the women who sacrificed and who gave and who did great things for this nation. I celebrate you, I honor you, and I just want to say God bless you for your service to these United States of America. I'm just one, but I want y'all to give your own selves a round of applause too while we are here. This is special. DeKalb County is uh, so honored. And you know, to have you uh, and talking earlier, I understand that we have more than 8,000 women veterans in DeKalb County, Georgia. In DeKalb County, Georgia. You all are trailblazers. You have demonstrated uh, that you're not afraid, that you're courageous. Uh, well, the women in the Marines, let me see my Marine, come on. Lord have mercy. Stand up, stand up, let me see the Marines again. That's all right. No, yeah. <laughs> Navy, stand up. Just take your own round. Stand up just by yourself. I want to know. I want to see. Uh, oh, Reverend can preach too. That'll preach, Reverend. Army, let me see the army. Come on now. Come on. Sister, and you can sing like that too? That's all right. Air Force, Air Force, Air Force, Air Force. You all are so wonderful. I'm so proud of you. You're so beautiful. Come on, give it up for that too, y'all. Ain't bad looking either. This is not pretty women in here today. And uh, so thank you all so much, and thank you for letting me come. Commissioner, thank you for reaching out and inviting me, and God bless. Enjoy this evening and celebrate your service to our great nation, because our great nation is truly celebrating you.
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome for tonight's host, sponsor, and your DeKalb County District 7 Commissioner, Lorraine Cochran Johnson. Now we're not having that. Let's take our seats, ladies. Allison just read off about three things. I guess I should have read the program. I only came here to bring the occasion. I'm, I was told, Lorraine, you know, you're on program for the greeting. And uh, she also said specifically talk about how we got here this evening. You know, I can remember it was in 2018 and I was at Exchange Park and I was in the middle of an election had never held any public office before, but I was told that there was a group of seniors there I ought to show up. And as I'm walking around, I run into a lady by the name of LaVita Bennett. Where's LaVita? Okay. Now, now b being as how I was told to tell it, this is the whole story. So I, I talked to LaVita, and as we're talking, she said, well, I'm a veteran. And I said, thank you for your service. I said, my husband's a retired lieutenant colonel, flew the KC-35, he came strolling in. That's what retired people do. <laughs> so we also talked, I said, well, my stepfather, he was a Marine. And I said, I'm, I'm committed because I understand after living with a veteran who served in World War II, I know some things. So she went on to tell me she had voted for the opponent and so forth. <laughs> Previously. <laughs> but just the same, I gave her my card. I said, well, it's so great to meet you. And hopefully our paths will cross again. So lo and behold, two elections later, primary and runoff, I am elected. And this lady showed up. <laughs> I couldn't remember her name, but I don't forget faces. I deal in faces and spirits. So once I'm there, you know, I thank God that he gave me an opportunity to do what I said. Now our relationship has been my most expensive since I took office. <laughs> Annually, and Mr. Cooper, I did Dr. Cooper, I didn't recognize you. You're becoming Benjamin Button. You're looking younger every time I see you. So I, I didn't recognize him over there, but you want to do what you say. So to date, every year annual, I have sponsored three feedings at the VA administration. And my feedings are the best they have over there. Now, it's the truth. I bring generally three 80-ton trucks because when you help people, you want to help people. And then here tonight, I think we're up to around 50 grand. So that being said, LaVita, our relationship couldn't, you, you're one of the most expensive friends I have. <laughs> but this evening, we're here to celebrate women. Not just any women. We're here to celebrate veterans. <laughs> Give yourselves a hand. You know, one thing about women, oftentimes we're so busy concerning ourselves with other people, we don't stop to take time to fellowship. And most importantly, I've come to realize in many instances, women simply are not acknowledged. CEO Thurman said in DeKalb County, we have over 8,000 veterans, female, Across the United States, about two million. Your service is unprecedented, your dedication, because not only are you a veteran, but many of you were wives, mothers, sisters, cousins. And it's not an easy thing to do. 
So it's my honor to stand before you to just simply say thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your beauty. Because I know personally what sacrifice means. It is not an easy thing. So this is only a small token of what I can do for you. If there's ever anything you need in any way, I'm committed to you. I'm a public servant of a different type. But nonetheless, it gives me great honor to say thank you for your service, women of DeKalb County, Georgia. Yes. And I believe at this time, Allison, may I take my seat? There were about three things that yes, you indicated you I ought to do. Okay. Yes, you may. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Jennifer Jackson Trotter, founder and CEO of Military Veterans Coalition of One. Well, I think everybody that just went before me stole my thunder, but we're gonna go through it anyway. <laughs> Chaplain Coleman, you, you, you took the show, thank you. Thank you for um, recognizing us and praying for us and um, just keeping us in your spirit. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Commissioner Cochran Johnson, distinguished guests, and the veterans of DeKalb County. My name is Jennifer Trotter, and I am here to honor you. I am here to announce the different branches of service in which the CEO and Ms. Coleman already acknowledge you. But we're going to do this again. So if you served in the Army, please stand up. <laughs> you may be seated. If you served in the Air Force, please stand up. Thank you. And I understand we do not have any um, service members from the Coast Guard, so we'll go ahead and go to the Navy. Please stand up. The United States Marine Corps. Thank you. Thank you is what we're accustomed to hearing. Thank you for your service and thank you for your sacrifice. Today is a great day. It's a great day because Commissioner Johnson recognizes us. She recognized us as women first, a wife, and a warrior. Thank you. And if there's anything that we could ever do for you, please don't hesitate to call. The women of DeKalb County supports you, and thank you so much. I'm supposed to read through the script here. Uh, give me a second. Okay, I think at this time, Allison, you want to go ahead and take over? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Trotter. <laughs> On behalf of Commissioner Cochran Johnson, Dr. Anthony Cooper, and tonight's planning committee, we celebrate each and every one of you ladies. Thank you so much for your service. And as a token of our gratitude, we have prepared a video presentation highlighting each of you as well as your branch of service and the years you served. To our viewers watching live on DC 23, we will take a brief break to serve dinner and resume with our program. So please don't go. Stay tuned and join us in celebrating these wonderful DeKalb County women veterans. Everyone, please enjoy the video montage.
let everybody kind of get seated a little bit. All right. I have the distinct honor as the daughter of a two-time Purple Heart re uh, recipient, Colonel Lawrence C. Moore, my daddy. I grew up saluting my daddy every morning when he left out the door. So I learned how to stand up, get my spine straight, <laughs> salute properly, <laughs> like they did back in the 40s, and uh, obey, okay? Until I had to teach him how to obey. <laughs> <laughs> the tables flipped years later. And uh, so my dad, he served in the United States Army. He, um, he was like a little Archie Bunker in reverse. And every day he would get up and say, well, it's a good thing I'm not with the chair force. <laughs> Which I, okay, that's my dad's word. And you all are the smartest people in, in, in the military. I just want you to know. And the maybes. So you know that he went on and on. So there's a lot of military jokes in my house. I really want to thank LaVita because if it were not for her when we came to Georgia and then my dad moved here with me, I would not have known a lot about the VA and all the terrible benefits that we just are not getting. And I fight every day in the House of Representatives whenever there's a bill up for our veterans to make sure that the VA is doing something. I literally go to bat and holler and scream at the people who come from the VA and try to tell me how the services work. And I have told them what the real deal is and why we have so many veterans who are upset, hide behind that blue car cloth. Because as Michael Thurman said, I used to be on the other side raising hell. I'm still on the inside because it's still too fresh and raw for me. I live with my dad, or my dad lives with me now, and I've had to take care of him. And in taking care of him and to deliver my Colonel Daddy the kind of health care that he deserved, Okay, because he deserved it more than anyone. He was 90 years old when he passed last March. And so he had been in the military straight out of college. He was a commissioned officer coming out of Louisiana. And my dad deserved it just like millions and millions of other veterans and active duty people. And I have had a tay to tay with the VA. <laughs> That's right. I have been the one to come up there and park on the curb, coming in there screaming and hollering. And they still elected me. I was hollering at them on Mental Health Awareness Day <laughs> at the Capitol. <laughs> but I had to tell that out loud to everybody because I didn't want them to think that that was my day. They just happened to be there that day. So I want you to know as veterans that I do, I, I'm looking out for your health care. I may can't get you all the things that you, ha that you have or you're going to get, but I make sure that the VA is going to start to pay attention to men and women and in this day and time and in during this crisis. So it's very important. I have invited, and I think she's going to take me up on it, my commissioner, my commissioner, uh, to have you all's day down at the United, uh, well, not the United States, but at the, at the Georgia State Capitol, where it would be very grand, and we'll put on the dog for you. So I hope that she will she will allow me to work with her. I think it would be wonderful. I know it's not in cozy decab, but I think it would be really grand for the state. Yes. I think that we should thank you for your sacrifice. My daddy told me not to tell anyone their service anymore. It is a sacrifice the moment you sign up because you don't know if you're going to come home. You don't know if somebody's going to kill you. And just like my little niece who was killed at Fort Hood, by her husband, okay? And then he killed himself. We don't know the time nor the day. Therefore, on behalf of the state of Georgia and District 90 and the next 91 soon, um, we are recognizing this day to celebrate the Cab County women veterans and for other purposes. You know what that could be. Okay, whereas the month of March has been reserved, has been reserved. So I want y'all to stop right there. I have reserved the month of March to be in Women's History Month to be DeKalb County DeKalb Veterans County. Women's Day. 
and it has been Women's History Month uh, ever since 1980 to commemorate and encourage the study, observance, and celebration of the vital role of women, and I am one of them, in American history. And whereas women have been instrumental in providing aid in every United States military conflict, foreign and domestic, beginning as cook, seamstress, laundry women, running military hospitals and serving as Civil War nurses. And I know that I have a colleague, I don't know that she's here, um, Viola Davis, she is one of those. So we are celebrating her as well. Whereas over 400 women uh, distinguish themselves as men, uh, as men to fight for both the Union and the Confederate armies in the Civil War, and whereas more than 1,500 I'm sorry, 150,000 women served in the American Army Corps during World War II in a variety of supporting and non-combative roles to contribute to the war and its efforts, and whereas June 12, 1948, marked the date that Women's Armed Services Integration and Act officially granted women the right to serve, oh goodness, that's so powerful, to serve as regular and permanent members of the United States Air Force in the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, and the Air Force. I want to cry on that one because whenever women make history and in, in, in vetting men, that's so powerful right there. Um, whereas the following um, May uh, many decades of restricted services, women's roles in the military expanded to command, command roles in non-combative units by the 1970s. And I'm going to move on down because this will be in Lorraine Cochran Johnson's office in the halls of history. You can read them. And also, every woman in here is entitled to one of these. Mm -hmm. You can come and visit me. I'm going to read the last line because then it makes it official. But you can come to my office or call my office, call Lorraine's office. We will arrange for each and every one of you all to get a copy of this with the seal and the signature. Whereas our great union, our great nation owes current past and present service women indescribable debt of gratitude, but not for their selfishness or instrumental service to protect our freedom and civil liberties, but also for the indelible impression and inspiration that you all, they, will make in the future generations. Now, you gonna step forward. Therefore, this is where it gets legal. Oh, got to step forward now. Okay. Now, because <laughs> we went there, whereas, whereas, and, and, and. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives that the members of this body recognize March 25th, 2022 as a day of, to celebrate the Cab County Women's Veterans and their immunerable contributions on behalf of the state and the nation. And I present that to you and every woman in the military service, past, present, and the future. Let me say to my state representative, Ms. Angela Moore, thank you. And to each of you women here, this is a special moment. I intend to ensure that each and every one of you receive a copy of this proclamation. To my knowledge, this is the first time a month has been dedicated to any group. And I am so honored that this has happened on behalf of DeKalb County's female veterans. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for recognizing all the great women. And I know that I said my daddy's words, but let me just say it again to each and every one of you all. Thank you for your sacrifice. I do appreciate it. Oh, yes. Come on over here.
Thank you. Well, that was quick. That was like the Washington Post. Click, 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 click. <laughs> thank you so much. No, thank you. Okay. Please welcome back Commissioner Lorraine Cochran Johnson, who will read a proclamation on behalf of the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners. And you can start to well. Okay, the proclamations don't stop. Now, the difference is, of course, in District 7 of DeKalb County, Georgia, as a fiduciary elected official on behalf of the people of whom I represent, which includes each and every one of you, over 800,000 people. I have prepared also a proclamation for this evening on behalf of the women's veterans of DeKalb County, Georgia. Whereas March is Women's History Month and the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners pay tribute to and honor all DeKalb County women's veterans who have bravely and nobly served in all branches of the military in the United States of America and Whereas DeKalb County has 8,200 women veterans who are being celebrated in honor of their military service, the contributions they have made in DeKalb communities, the skills and experiences from their military service to make achievements in their careers, and their dedication as public service leaders, and whereas from the Revolutionary War to present day conflicts, Women have proudly served in the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and Space Force as nurses, pilots, engineers, soldiers, and other specialties. However, their service has been traditionally under-recognized. And whereas President Truman signed into law on June 12th, 1948, the Women's Armed Services Integration Act, which formally established Women Veterans Day and females were recognized as full and permanent members of the armed forces. And whereas women now comprise 10% of veterans in the United States, and as this number continues to increase, we will raise public awareness and recognition of the service and sacrifice of women veterans in DeKalb County and honor their service, sacrifice, and love to country. And now, therefore, the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners do hereby celebrate the contribution of women in military service in DeKalb County from past, present, and future generations inclusive of women who have served in all eras and branches of the United States military in honor of Women History Month. Be it proclaimed this 25th day of March, 2022, as DeKalb County Women's Veterans Month. Let us all stand. Thank you for your service. Now, in honor of this day, I have prepared for each and every one of you a mini proclamation that you can carry home. I just want to say thank you and this particular proclamation. If you'll come forward, Ms. Levita. I just want to say to you, thank you. A chance encounter, and I want us to all remember as women, we never know who we meet. We never know what opportunities that may provide in the future. As God's creatures and those who are dedicated to service, I say thank you, and to you I say a special thank you. Because I, I you know, it's funny. You told me you voted for somebody else, but it didn't matter. You wasn't running it. I wasn't running it. <laughs> we were just getting started. Uh -huh. But I'm so thankful that love and true dedication has no boundaries. So thank you. I love you and I appreciate you love so you much too. for all that you do. You too. Okay. <laughs> I love you. There you, you go. That's yours to keep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, at this time, I believe uh, we, we also have, I also have some more tokens. Hold on just a minute. 
At this time, uh, Allison, I'd like to confirm that I am to read the history. As the proclamations read this evening have stated, there is a rich history of service women in this country. Women have always been instrumental in providing aid in every United States military conflict, beginning as cooks and laundry women to running military hospitals and serving as civil nurses. In 1948, the Women's Armed Services Integration Act officially granted women the right to serve as regular and permanent members of the United States Air Force. And I am proud to share with you that more than 350,000 women in total served in uniform during World War II, of which more than 150,000 served in the Women's Army Corps. These women took on supporting non-combat roles, not only working in clerical positions, but also driving vehicles, repairing airplanes, working in laboratories, cryptology, serving as radio and telephone operators, and many other vital roles that were important to the mission and the success of the United States. Following many decades of restrictive service, in 2013, women were finally granted the right to fully serve in direct ground combat roles in the United States Armed Forces. And since then, women have gone to combat, gone on to conduct units as commanders, leading the charge during present day conflict and wars, and displaying their heroics. I am sure that many of you in this room did not make the choice to serve lightly, and you stand in great company this evening, as many women before you have chosen and taken active roles in shaping the very fabric of American history. Currently, there are nearly two million living women's veterans in the United States, and approximately 8,200 women veterans reside right here in DeKalb County, Georgia. Many have taken off their uniforms and have transitioned into change-making civilian occupations, continuing to blaze trails for future generations. Women like State Senator Tanya Anderson, who served in the United States Air Force. State Representative Angela Moore, who served in the United States Army. Yes. State Representative Viola Davis, who served in the United States Army and was the first woman interim sheriff of DeKalb County. Ruth Springer, who served in the United States Marine Corps. Julia H. Hill, who served in the United States Army Nurse Corps and upon retirement served over 4,400 volunteer hours at the Atlanta VA Medical Hospital. <laughs> and countless other women veterans who, like these women, called DeKalb County home. That is why this Women's History Month, we pause to honor and celebrate you and all of DeKalb's past and present veterans, not only for your bravery, but for the many lives you have touched at home and abroad. We owe you all an inexpressible debt and truly thank you for your service. Thank you. Okay, at this time, I am going to present awards. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm always excited to give. So I have the honor of presenting awards to veterans who have and are making monumental differences through their dedication in DeKalb County, Georgia. Each awardee, see, you all didn't expect this part of the program was selected by a nominating committee based upon the, the bios that were received 
from public nominations. So imagine that. The five award categories are the Veteran Service Award, the Veteran Civil Outreach Award, the Veterans Impact Award, the Veteran Support Award, and the Veteran Leadership Award. Beginning with the Veteran Service Award, the nominating criteria required the recipient to be an outstanding individual who has been involved in community service, has made a community impact, or has provided community support to a board, commission, community group, or veteran organization. In addition, the recipient had to be someone that has demonstrated and sustained commitment to their community. Tonight's recipient has indeed met all these requirements. She was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, and was raised in Queens, New York, as well as Alexandria, Virginia. She attended Grambling State University, but left to serve in the Louisiana National Guard to help pay for tuition. She would later be commissioned in the ROTC program at Northwestern State University, where she earned her BS in Business Administration in 1992. Shortly thereafter, she went on active duty in the United States Army as a second lieutenant, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear CBRN officer and was stationed in Hawaii. She later became the first African-American female to serve as the company commander for the 51st CBRN Company at Fort Polk Army Base in Louisiana. She also served as a human resource officer with deployments in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom, where she was responsible for maintaining personnel strength in a combat forward area. Having served in the United States Army for 25 years, she retired as a Lieutenant Colonel and went on to serve as a peer mentor for Melwood Veteran Services, as well as the Wounded Warrior Project, where she mentored female veterans living with post-traumatic stress disorder, TBI, and military sexual trauma. As you can tell, she has truly dedicated herself to a life of service. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you please help me congratulate the inaugural recipient of the 2022 Veteran Service Award, Ms. Thelma Brown. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. I wasn't expecting this. Um, but like she said, I'm all about service. It's not about me. I couldn't have made it throughout my years without people helping me along the way. So I dedicate my life to all female veterans. Whatever you need, I'm always here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. You know, when we said we wanted to do an award show, we truly wanted to do an award show. And one thing that I'll say, because I come from LA, Lower Alabama, <laughs> you may start from humble beginnings, but this is our dry run here this evening, and I would say we hadn't done a bad job. Yes. So thank you so much. And, and I want to also, I would be remiss at this moment if I didn't just stop for a moment to say thank you to my team. You know, being a part of military and understanding military service, the head doesn't move without the neck. 
there's something about a unit and a body of people that work together, that pray together, that fight together, that survive together. And this lady standing to my left, Dr. Leah Davis, is my chief of staff. I'm not sure where Allison is. She's moving around. You've seen her all evening. When I ran for office, um, when I got to the cab and I understood what I need, I went back and I thank each one of them for answering the call to walk away to go through this journey with me. So thank you because independent of both of you, I could not do what I do. J.P. Phillips, who's in the back, he's my neighbor. He's also my constituent liaison. One of the finest people I know. So I'm very, and I get emotional when I talk about them. Because everybody ought to have the support that I do. So thank you all for working with me on this, and I just look forward to where we're going to take it. The next award, the next award of this evening is called the Veteran Civil Outreach Award. It was created to recognize a phenomenal individual who has demonstrated that through their civic involvement, the quality of life in their community has been enhanced. Tonight's recipient has done just that. And let me say, there are some amazing women out there. And oftentimes, we just don't know each other's story. But she was born in Chicago and has lived in many cities before settling in Atlanta, where she graduated from high school and started working with children that were required special needs. Just before her 20th birthday, she joined the United States Marine Corps, where she served in several military conflicts and played on the Marine women's softball team and the commander's bowling team. In 1995, while stationed in California, she began volunteering with the Veterans Affairs System and later continued volunteering while overseas. After 20 years of service, she retired in 1998 and began volunteering full time with the Atlanta VA Medical Center specifically in the Women's Wellness Center, becoming a volunteer representative for the women's veterans. To date, she is an active citizen who has worked with many community leaders in DeKalb, Clayton, as well as Henry counties, and has served on countless community and, co and uh, company boards. She's a longtime member of the National Association of Black Veterans, Disabled American Veterans, the Black Marine Heritage Organization, Soldiers Angels, and many other veteran service organizations. In addition to receiving several awards for her support of military veterans, she's also received special recognition from the state of Georgia for amassing over 50,000 hours of volunteer work in and around her community. To that, I think she deserves a hand clap of praise. Another colloquialism that I bring with me this evening, my granddaddy used to say, if you want to know what's important to a man or a woman, you look at where they put two things, their time and their money. She's put her time into people. Tonight's recipient has truly impacted the lives of the community she has served, and that is why it is my pleasure to present the inaugural 2022 Veteran Civil, Civil Outreach Award to none other than Ms. LaVita Bennett.
Come on, let us speak first. Go and say something. <sighs> Thank you, everybody. This is what I like to do, is volunteer and service others. There's no family like your military family. And I mean that sincerely from the bottom of my heart. Though most of us are blood, born of blood to others, that camaraderie that we have amongst each other is second to none. Whether you're Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, or what's the new one? Space, Space Force. <laughs> We're all here to serve. Thank you. Thank you. That's right, JP. When you got JP, you got a whole team. He's a personal cheerleader, personal assistant, community liaison. He's just everything. So thank you, JP, for being here this evening with the women. Okay? The next award that we are going to present is called the Veterans Impact Award. And I want to say you all did a great job with establishing the criteria for these awards. I pray that this can become absolutely Miss Trotter. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Because hopefully this program can become a model for other counties to honor their women's veterans. Yes. The Veteran Impact Award was envisioned to recognize an outstanding individual that has performed acts of selfless service, volunteer service, and has impacted the veteran community and their families. Tonight's recipient is from Akron, Ohio and is a retired United States Marine Corps disabled veteran. During her military service, she began as a diesel mechanic, moving into logistics and embarked embarkation, training NCO and eventually became a nuclear biological chemical warfare specialist. She served 10 years of active duty and 10 years in reserve duty in both Ohio and Maryland, and then moved on to federal government service at the Department of Defense and the Atlanta VA Medical Center, where she retired. Currently, she is a certified veteran service officer for the National Association for Black Veterans, Inc., where she serviced veterans and their families in the DeKalb, Henry and Clayton counties. She founded the original chapter 112 of the National Association for Black Veterans in Georgia because she saw the need for veterans to gain help in receiving resources and claims assistance in the state. Her future aspirations are to continue finding resources for the homeless as well as assisting the children and widows of veterans with gaining their benefits and medical and service records. It is her commitment to this work that has earned her the honor of becoming tonight's recipient of the inaugural Veteran Impact Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me congratulate Ms. Crystal Dickens. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me turn around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say a few words to 
Hello, everyone. This is a distinguished honor. You all have no idea how hard it was for me to come here tonight. And my sister Maureen over there, she hired LaVita. <laughs> she pulled me in. Thank you. I'm here, and I'm so grateful to be amongst you all living, breathing, standing. There's so many of us who are no longer here. I've seen it happen. Amen. You're blessed. Amen. And I'm blessed to be with you. And I thank you all for the award. And I thank my sister Maureen, LaVita Bennett. And to you all too, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, madam. Yes, come, come on, we're going to hold yeah, this. Let's get a photo Stand first. Oh, sure. Photo first. Come on. There we go. All right. Okay. Okay. And then we'll thank bring you. the award to you. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I was so thankful, Miss Tickens. It was funny as, as we started to sit there and talk and I, I realized who you were because you read all these papers and, you know, it's a blessing to be able to put a face with a name and I'm just thankful and I feel honored that you were able to come out and be here with us this evening. Okay. Our next award is the Veteran Support Award, which highlights the achievements of an individual who has been involved in community support efforts and has made a community impact or has provided community support to a board, commission, community group, or veteran organization. Tonight's recipient is a retired combat veteran who served 27 years in the United States Army Reserve's 461st Personnel Service Battalion as an administrative clerk. During active duty, she served in three deployments, including Saudi, where she stayed stateside to help deploy other soldiers, Bosnia, where she performed clerical missions and guard duty, and Kuwait, where she provided her fellow service members with administrative as well as postal support. Her detail, organization, and knowledge during her service to the United States Army Reserve was invaluable. And that is why she has been chosen for this prestigious award. Ladies and gentlemen, please assist me in recognizing the 2022 recipient of the inaugural Veteran Support Award, Miss Melissa Dean. Thank you for the award. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> Surprise. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I can y'all put me on the spot. Uh, I, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well, with with that said, your your service is spoken for itself. So okay. we gonna give you that and okay. let's get us some photos here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be careful. And if you all will see us this evening, we'll give you the boxes for your awards so that, you know, you, you can keep them until you get them home and, and wherever you like to display them. And now we're down to our final category, the Veteran Leadership Award was created to honor an individual who has been active in local, county, or state government 
and has been instrumental in influencing decision makers on issues that directly impact the citizens of the communities they serve. Tonight's recipient is an honorary discharged commissioned officer of the United States Army and airborne who comes from a family of veterans. She graduated with honors from the Medical College of Georgia with a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing and has over 23 years of experience as a critical care nurse, administrator, and instructor. She started her career of community service as an actual plaintiff in the Brown versus Board of Education case, which was filed by the late Charles Scott Sr., who was a mentor to her mother. She later became the co-founder of Unhappy Taxpayer and Voter and joined the Fulton County Taxpayer uh, Foundation to receive training on property tax appeals with the intent to extend property tax appeal services into DeKalb County. She has over 10 years of experience servicing the DeKalb County community by educating the public about waste, mismanagement, and efficiency in both local and state government. And she works hard to advocate for homeless veterans. Currently, she serves as the District 87 representative in the Georgia State House of Representatives, where she continues her advocacy for her constituents. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 inaugural recipient of the Veteran Leadership Award, Ms. Viola Davis. Yes, Representative Davis is not able to be with us this evening, but I truly want to acknowledge her. Um, you know, I work alongside her, and some of you may be familiar with the fact that um, the state just passed the Crown Act that forbids discrimination against hair and employment or any environment. It was Representative Davis who worked alongside me, and we passed that legislation right here in DeKalb County first. I'll also say that when my seat was threatened, recently there was a movement to eliminate super districts in DeKalb County, Georgia. When that happened, you know, I have three degrees, I attended law school and have a Harvard certificate. It's some things when you know, you know what you know. And I just trust God. I think um, Mayor Dinkins said it best when he said, I draw circles, not lines. You cannot separate me from the love of my people. Whatever damage I've done has already happened. So I'll continue, even if districts are redrawn, I will continue, whether or not I serve DeKalb County, to, dis to serve my people because that's truly what I came to do. But it was Representative Viola Davis who went directly to the legislative attorneys for the state and presented the Org Act of DeKalb County, Georgia and received the official letter indicating that if DeKalb County is to change its current form of government, it will be by referendum. So again, I trust the people of DeKalb I trust you to draw lines and circles. So if that should ever come to the ballot, it's because of her fighting for what we knew was absolutely right. I will never on my watch allow your responsibility and your duty to be taken from you. And even though she's not here this evening, I wanna say humbly to her, thank you. Because in government and politics, things don't always happen as they should. But thank God for honest people who are willing to do the yeoman's work that's necessary to ensure that everyone has equality and that fairness prevails in whatever the situation may be. So.
very thankful for her. At this time, and now Dr. Anthony Cooper will share with you his closing remarks, but actually, hold on. Now, this is the last part of the program. Now, as any good mother, okay, you do not separate or distinguish your children. Everyone that is here this evening is a female veteran and each and every one of you have served. And me being creative and us sitting there thinking through how we can honor everyone. This evening, you are each receiving a thank you for your service, honoring DeKalb County Veterans Medallion from DeKalb County, Georgia, that bears our seal of 1822 from me. Additionally, this evening, each of you will receive a commemorative pen from Dr. Cooper from the VA Veterans Administration. So everyone here tonight, we are celebrating each and every one of you. I pray that this is warmly received. Uh, we actually took the time, I want to thank Dr. Davis to design this. So this is a unique design and it's one of a kind to DeKalb County, Georgia. So please take it, keep it. If you're like me, things like this often go, I have a special drawer, it's my top drawer when I don't want to lose things. So I don't know if it'll go to the top drawer or maybe it'll go to the top of a shelf. But wherever it goes, I pray that you'll cherish it and I pray that it means as much to you as it does to me to give it to you. So, thanks. And at this time, um, I am going to turn over the floor to Dr. Anthony Cooper, who will share his closing remarks. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Did you get yeah. your mic? I did. You did? Okay. But not going, but I want one. So, my wife, from my back. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I tell y'all what, I have been set up tonight. I have just been following some amazing women tonight. And I want to let y'all know I am not scared. Because I was raised by a bad single mother. And I say that, I'm looking at this because I asked uh, the commissioner to give me one for my wife. My wife served in the military as well, 21 years. So thank God um, for her. So I'm not going to be long. Um, has this not been a great night? I mean... I've been at the VA for 10 years now, and, I, and I, I go almost everywhere. We have over 50 counties in Atlanta that we cover. I have never seen a program like this for our women veterans. I just want to tell you that. This is amazing, Commissioner. Your team are amazing. Dr. Davis, Allison, y'all have just done an amazing job. Y'all do as y'all do, the two of you do as much as a small platoon in the Army. I just want to let you know that. So just a great job. My team, Frenchie, uh, Sidarius, and Renita, and Gwen, thank y'all so much for doing a great job. I'm not going to be long. I got a couple things I want to really share with you, and it's going to be real quick. You know, when I was four years old, my father was killed in an automobile accident. He was a Vietnam era veteran. And my mother was 23 years old when he died. So she was a widow. You know, back then they got married early. And so she was 23 years old with five children. Two, four, six, eight, and 10 years old. You know, we weren't Catholic, but you know, they lined them up back to back. And I say, and I'm from North Carolina, by the way, a little small country boy, tobacco fields, if anybody know anything about that. And so when my mother um, was left with, with five children, I can remember growing up as a little boy with a single mother, and I can often remember people saying to her or in my presence that, can't no woman raise no man. Y'all ever heard that before? Yeah. And you know, like I said, it was three boys and two girls that my mother was left with, and I heard that. Can you imagine how that made me feel? as a little kid hearing that, that I got a single woman who's trying to raise me and society was telling me that she couldn't raise me, I was gonna fail and the likelihood of me being successful just wasn't good. So I heard that, I know some of you may say, well, that was just, you know, that's, what, that's not what they meant, but that's what I heard. But I thought about it on tonight. 
what does she hear? And how often have you all been told something that you can't do? Well, I stand here to tell you that they told a lie. She raised three men. And so the next time you see that person that told you you couldn't do something, don't tell them they're a lie, because where I grew up, a lie was a bad word. You had to be a certain age before you could say lie. So may, may, maybe just say, no, you didn't get that right. And I thought about it, you know, and I grew up, she did, I, and my mother did an amazing job. And so I remember I joined the military. And in 1994, I became a basic training drill sergeant. My next powerful lesson about women. And so in 1994, for those of you who was in the Army, and, and most of you, I was a basic training drill sergeant. Around 1994 and 1995, they integrated the militaries where they said recruits could train together. And there was a lot of chatter about the problems that female veterans would have and the, the, the fraternization and all these problems. But you know what I found out as a basic training drill sergeant? The female veterans outperformed the males in almost every category. They did. Everything that they said was wrong. Everything that they said about them, they couldn't shoot, they couldn't do this. They were the easiest to train on basic rifle marksmen. Because why? Because most of the guys thought they knew already. They had already picked up bad habits. And so we had to retrain them. But not a lot of the women recruits, they paid attention to everything we said. As I said earlier, I've been at the VA for 10 years now here in Atlanta, your county. Atlanta has the largest female population of veterans in the country. Did y'all hear me? Atlanta has the largest female population of veterans in the country. This is the Mecca for women veterans. So listen, my 10 years that I've been there, every director of the medical center in my 10 years have been a woman. Atlanta is going to be the example for how women veterans should be treated in the VA. I'm going to tell you that. I believe that. I know Candace is up there now. I'm not going to talk much longer. But Candace, where's Candace at from our uh, women's program? Is she still there? So I'm going to tell you, there was a recent report that came out a couple of years ago that said one out of every four females that goes to a VA medical facility feel uncomfortable. They feel harassed. That's going to change. And I'm telling y'all what we're going to do. Yeah. We're not going to tolerate it. We have an amazing women's veterans program in Atlanta, led by Kathleen O'Loughlin. And Kathleen told me one day, she, Kathleen said, hey, Dr. Cooper, you know, I was, we was talking about uh, males harassing women in the hospital. We have this I'm Not Invisible campaign. Some of you may have been in that photo that we've done. And we have a beautiful collage of women veterans on the wall near the, the um, canteen there. But she shared with me that the problems with women being harassed so much, and I didn't know that. And she said, there was one in particular, and she said some women that came to her and said, look, he constantly harassing me, this veteran. And so she said, she went to him and said, listen, you know, a women veteran comes to the VA oftentimes and they're often harassed. And he said, who is it, who's doing it? And she said, it's you. <laughs> and he said, I just be playing, I just be joking with them. They said, but it, they don't take it like it's funny. It's not funny to them. It is harassment. I am telling you, you are not invisible. Atlanta is going to change it. I believe that. So everywhere I go, I talk about our women. I talk about, we have, not only do we have the largest population, we have the largest population of pregnant women as well. So that I mean we love, we love and we love making babies. So, <laughs> so, and so every quarter, some of you know LaVita and Melissa know, we do baby showers. We do drive up baby showers. I just love it because it ain't my baby, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so it's, it's just a really great event. And so I say that two of the recipients today are everywhere. Where I met uh, Commissioner Corrine, Corrine, Lorraine Cochran Johnson was at a food giveaway event. Two of them are there every month almost passing out food to low-income veterans, over 200 a month. And as she said, every time she does it, the trunk and the back seat is overflowing with food. Over 100 pounds of food she gave to these people who would have been hungry if she had not done that for them. The first time she told me she said I was going to do this, I was like, oh, you know, you know, yeah, they always tell me that, you know. Not her. She delivered. 
And she said, I'm not done yet. And then this happens. I am telling you, I was just telling Jennifer, or Jennifer was just telling me, can we do this in every county? So I told Vita, I said, Vita, let's do this in every county. When Ms. Vita, stand, stand up, LaVita. Stand up, Vita. I'm sorry. Ms. Vita Brooks, y'all, from the state's office. The women's, and I told her, I said, listen, let's try to do this in every county. She said, you know, we got a hundred and some counties, right? I said, okay, let's start with Atlanta's 50 counties. We have 50 counties under our network. I said, let's, let's just start with those 50. I said, I know they ain't going to be able to do it this well, this good, the way that y'all have done it. I said, but we need to do it. And so I just want to say to you all just one more thing or two more things, and I'm going to take my, my seat. I think um, I know. Um, y'all know I was six feet tall 10 years ago. And every time y'all heard him just cutting me down over there, y'all heard him just chopping me down. And listen, Jennifer whispered to me, she said, I know you hate taking the, the blame for everything that everybody do. I, I said, but you know what? This is what makes it worth it. Every time I come to this, I get revitalized. I get a little bit taller or I buy some stacks on my heels for my shoes. <laughs> But listen, I just want to thank you all again and again. The team have just been so amazing. So I bought some beautiful canes. Where's Mr. Clark at? I bought some. There they are right there. And I hope everybody got the pins. Are those coins not amazing? I, I, was, telling, I was telling the commissioner's team. I'm sorry. I was telling the commissioner's team. I said, I'm going to tell you all something. Coins are gold in the military. Ma'am, and I'm telling you, are those not nice? Y'all look at those coins. They made some awesome coins, amazing. So not only did we bring the women veterans pin too, but I have these wooden canes. I'm not saying y'all are old. By no means am I saying that. But I have this veteran who was a Vietnam era veteran, and he, he was injured once, and he makes these wooden canes. And so one of our recipients tonight had one of them. And so I brought five of them. Commissioner, I'm going to give those five to you to give out. I promised one because okay. she jumped me as soon as I got in, and she's Army. So I want to give her her cane, if you don't mind. But all the, the other ones are yours, however you choose to give them away. And if anyone who doesn't get any tonight, please call me or call my office, and we'll make sure you get one of these beautiful canes. So look, isn't that beautiful? So, yeah, it's... Like I said, he, he injured himself in Vietnam, and he was a woodsman, he was a craftsman, so he, he made it. He was in Greenville, and his daughter volunteers with us in Atlanta, and so she just started bringing the carloads and the carloads of these. And so then we partnered with Gwinnett County Woodshop, and now they make them for us. And so we give them away, and so I just have a lot of them for people who do great things. And so I feel everybody in here has done something great tonight. So I want to get you one for your branch of the military, okay? Come on, let's take a picture together. She jumped me and said, don't get nobody, give it to me first. <laughs> so, and she's army. My branch, here we go. Let's put it down. Thank you. Thank you all. Good evening. Okay. And uh, let's make sure here I'm following the script. I want to, before we dismiss, and we're going to get out of here now, we're going to go ahead and have the benediction, as they say. Um, but I did want to take a moment, and let's have a moment of silence at this time for those who are not with us, and also for those who have been deployed. You know, uh, as we watch the news of what's going on right now in Ukraine and Russia, we see global conflicts. And I just want to impart upon everyone how precious life is, and also to be mindful of those who aren't with us and the continued sacrifice of people that ensure our safety and who fight to preserve our life and liberty. So at this time, if you would, just in silence and in solitude, let's just bow our heads for a moment. Thank you. 
let me first say to you, Dr. Cooper, thank you. You've been a wonderful partner. Uh, when I showed up, I, you did not. I could tell, you know, from the first conversation, you have a lot of conversations with people, but hopefully we've proven to be honorable. Uh, I'm thankful that you see the benefit in what happened here, and I do challenge, I'm going to challenge my fellow commissioners and elected officials from every part of the state to hold this type of event. I'd like to also say, although he's not with us at this moment, our CEO, Michael Thurman, for coming out this evening. I respect him immensely. Thank him for his leadership of DeKalb County. I'd like to thank the planning committee who has worked alongside us so diligently. This has probably been about four months in the works, if not longer. Conversation started even before that. My District 7 team, the Atlanta VA Medical Center staff, and all the organizations that came out tonight to support our veterans daily. To those of you watching at home, thank you for turning in and caring uh, for tuning in and caring for our women veterans within your respective families. And last but certainly not least, I thank all of DeKalb County's women's veterans.